We want to talk about angular uh, measurement, in other words, measuring angles themselves. We're going to be talking about them in degrees, also at compass directions, and also bearings. Just to explain quickly, I mean, where this stuff comes in here, just, I mean, there's a zillion million examples, I'm sure, but uh, I mean, just one example I could think of since I love skiing, uh, you can actually think of, for example, how steep is the ski hill here? So if you're skiing or snowboarding, for example, uh, how steep is this? So we could measure this angle right here. In other words, if I really wanted to, I could, you know, try to measure the angle, you know, between here and maybe the angle here, and maybe I find that angle right there. So I could find out how steep is this? We normally give it a little letter theta. It's a little Greek letter T here. So, okay, it's like, like a circle with a little line to it like this. We call it theta. That's an unknown angle. So maybe we could try to find that. Or maybe we could use degrees in order to uh, try to help to locate ourselves. So for example, uh, your iPhone or your other uh, you know, cell phone uh, may have some sort of location service. So it can actually use triangulation in order to figure out where you are. Turns out that has to do with angles as well. You could do it with, uh, you know, just measuring angles of something, you know, where something is relation to you. You can use this for navigation as well. I mean, it's used for so many different things. The first, I just want to explain to you what a degree is. Maybe we'll start with that one. Okay, so what a degree is. Um, I think what I'm going to do it is I'm just going to explain to you quickly um, what we're doing here. So if it's a, if it's a degree, uh, just imagine we're splitting up a circle into 360, uh, whoops, I shouldn't say degrees here, I should say 360 equal slices. Okay, so let's just say uh, equal slices. So if you can imagine like a piece of pizza, you know, where you're actually just trying to slice it up. Well, imagine you want it into 360 equal pieces. So each slice equals one degree. Yeah, that's really how it works. So for example, let's just say I try to draw myself a nice uh, circle. I'm a pretty lousy circle drawer, but I'll uh, attempt to anyway. So let's just say we have, um, well, let's just say we start off with something like a straight line going off to the right. Ooh, that wasn't very straight at all, was it? Oh my. All right, so let's assume I can draw nice straight lines. Oops, almost. So let's just assume I'm starting to the right here. This will be zero degrees. And as I go up and around this way, so maybe I make my angle now like this right here. Well, that right there, we're going to say, well, how many slices are these? Well, we've split up our whole circle into kind of four pieces. And I can keep going around until I go all the way to the left. I can keep going around until I go down. I can keep going around until I'm back where I was. Okay, so in other words, uh, maybe I'll actually try to redraw this a little bit nicer here. I'll actually try to draw it uh, again here. This time I'm going to try to draw it nicer. What I mean by nicer is I'm going to actually just draw myself a circle going around. I'm going to draw myself my little axis like this here. I it look a little bit nicer now. If I start off at zero and I go up all the way, well I've split up my circle into four pieces now. If you look at this, the whole way around is all the way around one circle. So if I go around just a quarter of the way, it turns out 360 divided by four is 90. So that's 90 degrees I've just gone up. If I go all the way over here, this right here is 180 degrees. If I keep going, it's 270. And if I keep going, it's also 360 degrees. So you can see that it depends on how many times I want to go around my circle. Okay, so if I keep going around a circle like this right here, it depends on how many times I've gone around. And again, each of these little slices would be one degree. So just to show you, for example, I could use a little protractor right here and I can use it to try to measure angles. Okay, that'll be another set of videos I think I'll do later on. But uh, in this case, it's just important to remember that we can measure angles by figuring out how many of these little slices is it. So for example, if I want to know, you know, how much is this angle right here, for example. Oops, uh, so maybe that's the angle right there I want to try to draw. Looks like it'll have to go like this. I want to draw that angle right there. Well, it's actually halfway between 0 and 90, let's say. So that would be 45 degrees. Yeah, so it's pretty straightforward to do. You just have to look at how many different slices, so to speak, you'd have to make this into. So that's degrees in a very, very rough uh, way of uh, looking at it. Okay. Now, if we want to look at compass directions, that's another important thing. So maybe I'll write that one down. Compass directions. 
luckily we can actually match that up really nicely. So we can say degrees and compass directions, we can actually match them up. Except the only problem is this time, I want to start off with zero degrees, so to speak, being up here. See, I, the reason I showed you this last drawing was just to show you that it doesn't matter where you set your zero. Your zero could be on the right, in other words, and then you're going around this way. Or you could be, you know, at the top here and going around or around. It doesn't matter. By the way, uh, just as an aside here, if you do like skiing or snowboarding, a lot of people talk about snowboarding tricks based on how many times you spin around, also with skiing. So, for example, if you start off and you take off with your jump, you know, maybe you start off and you're facing this way. I'm a really bad artist, as you'll see, is the reason I don't teach art. So let's just say this is my skier here. I start off this way, and as I go in the air, I want to flip all the way around. In other words, I want to twist around. Well, if I twist around and go all the way around in a circle, that's 360 degrees. So that's good. That means I'll land back again with my skis facing forward. This is assuming, of course, I'm jumping that way. In other words, my skis will have faced forward. While I'm in the air, my skis will be backwards, then I'll be sideways and back forward again if I did 360 degrees. Keep in mind, if you have twin tip skis or something like that, you can actually land it if you're 180 degrees. In other words, if you start off facing forward, you could maybe jump to where you land maybe backwards, for example. So if you, uh, you know, take off facing forward, let's say, with your tips to the right, then you could actually land with your tips facing the opposite way. In other words, if you did a 180, you would be landing you know, this way. So then you'd kind of you'd land going that way. So that's kind of neat. So you jump and sort of twist around. And of course, you can go all the way around if you want. You know, you can spin all the way around. That would have been 360 degrees. Especially in snowboarding, uh, they like to do all sorts of things like um, you can go around again, and that's called a 540. If you go you know, all the way around once and then another half. If you go again around again, it's another uh, 180 degrees, so that makes it 720. It's basically just a matter of adding 90 degrees all the time. See, zero, there's 360. So this is zero, add 90, add 90, add 90, add 90 again. You get 360 and so on. So you can keep going around. If we want to do compass directions, however, we set our zero degrees here. And this is our zero. And we're going to consider this zero degrees, so to speak, is going to equal, we call it north. That's our compass direction. Okay, that's, that's going straight up. And if we want to go to the right, so to speak, so this way, uh, this time with compass directions, the angles increase as you go kind of this way to the right, so clockwise. In other words, that's the direction of an uh, arrow on a clock, for example, would spin that way. So if you go zero degrees, well, that means if you go to the right by a quarter of a circle, that's going to be 90 degrees. And that's going to equal, we call that east. Okay, so N stands for north. E stands for east. If you keep going all the way around them, that's 180 degrees. That's going to be called S, which stands for south. Then you've got all the way around again. That's 270 degrees. That'll be west. Now these uh, compass uh, things, these are really important to know if, for example, you want to know where you're going. So you can use these, for example, to um, maybe for flying a plane, for example. And that's one thing I always like doing. You'll notice my examples have to do with skiing or climbing or plane flying, because those are the things I really enjoy. So for example, if you're flying in a plane and someone says, uh, I want you to go uh, northeast, then you know what that means. That means when you, you know, line up your compass, so to speak, north, uh, well, then you're going to go, you know, halfway between north and east. In other words, this line right here would be called northeast. And if you went over here, this would be called southeast. And this right here would be, for example, southwest. This would be northwest. You can go even further by saying, you know, depending on where you are. In other words, if you're maybe you want to draw another one over here, you're a little bit more uh, east than northeast. So we could actually call it east northeast. So it gets a little bit complicated that way. But basically, compass directions are pretty nice. And actually, um, I'll be explaining compass directions and actually how a compass works in the next video.